Before the video begins, when you install your game, don't install it into a system folder. Windows can restrict you from changing files in them, and it's just easier to install it elsewhere anyway. My advice is to create a games folder right on your drive, and install any games into there. If you've installed your games into a system folder, just move them elsewhere. Unfortunately, a lot of antivirus softwares trigger mods for really any game as false positives. I'd suggest making an antivirus exclusion for your GTSA directory. For the steps, it depends on your antivirus, so research your antivirus software and see how it's done. For installing most things in this video, you should use a program such as 7-Zip. I recommend 7-Zip over programs such as WinRAR, as it has no annoying message on startup and has been claimed to be coded better. Either way, in the end, it doesn't really matter what you use. You just need to be able to open .zip files and stuff like that. If you don't know, the latest Steam version of GTA San Andreas is a pretty garbage version of GTA San Andreas to play on. There's a pretty epic video by Vadim M about it, there's a link in the description. Now because it's so bad, if you're on the Steam version of the game, you'll want to use a downgrader. There's a link in the description. All you do is download the game on Steam, download the downgrader, specifically this one, then put the downgrader's contents into your main directory, then run the install.bat file. Once the window closes, your game should be downgraded. Mods such as GTA Underground don't require anything more. If you get anything more, it may or may not break the mods. I have a GTA Underground setup guide if it's necessary, just watch the video for more information. If you plan on modding GTA San Andreas, which if you continue to follow this video, you will be modding it, or if you plan on modding really any game, you should back up your game's directory. If you don't know how, then simply copy and paste your directory somewhere safe and then somewhere you remember. After that, do not modify this directory at all, just keep it this way. Whenever you need vanilla files, which vanilla means just completely fresh from the game, copy and paste them from this backup directory into your modded one. The first thing you should mod into your game is the Essentials Pack. The Essentials Pack is a package filled with mods that you should never have outside of your game. The list for the mods featured here are Silence ASI Loader, which loads the ASA files, which is necessary for tons of mods. Then there's Silent Patch, which is a mod that fixes a lot of the game's issues. Then there's Clio, which is a library of opcodes and just general modder shit, which is also used for tons of mods. We'll essentially be using this as a plugin for ourselves though. Then there's Clio Plus, which adds 290 commands for Clio, which modders can then use to make higher quality mods easier. It's not used too often, but the longer time goes on, more mods will utilize it. Mod Loader, which is, as the name suggests, a mod loader. And the best thing of all is that when you use Mod Loader, it doesn't replace any files. Then there's widescreen fix and HOR support, which fixes the field of view and aspect ratio of the HUD, camera, lights, and more. Then there's window mode, which makes the game window mode, if you want to use that. And then there's frame length vigilante, which fixes a ton of major issues relating to frames per second. And then there's run DLL32 fix, which fixes an issue where your game can run, but it doesn't actually show up, but it is running in the background. And then there's no DEP, which fixes a crash regarding data execution prevention. I'll be featuring some more recommended mods later, but for the people who just want to play the game at its best, this is all you need. To install this, simply download and open the file and then drag and drop it all into your main directory, placing when you're asked to. You don't have to drag and drop the readme's or the game UX thing, but you really should read into them. They do contain some useful information. Mod loader can be scary at first, but I'll give a quick rough guide as to how it works. There's a text guide on mixed mod for more specifics with this. The way we'll install mods is like this. We'll have a folder within the mod loader folder, and within that folder, there'll be modded files, and if necessary, even more folders. A good example of this is gInput. gInput is a mod that gives better controls for controller users. During the gInput installation, there's a folder just called gInput SA. This is what you should put inside of the mod loader. Within that, there is a .asi file, a .ini file, and then there's a models folder, and then inside of that, there's a bunch of .txt files. There's some exclusions to the simple rule of putting it into Mod Loader. For more information, be sure to check out that Mixed Mods link I mentioned before. If you follow that link, I'd highly suggest looking into the Profile section. I didn't realize it until recently that you could do this. It's really neat, especially if you play SMP. Before the section ends, I will give a few tips for Mod Loader. You can turn off mods while you're in-game. You can and should keep your Mod Loader folder organized. The final tip I'll give is to keep your priorities proper. Now I'm done with the mod loader guide. It's not that in depth, but if you're not modding a lot, it should be good enough. The next mod is recommended only if you're willing to edit the lengthy file that comes with it for compatibility reasons with mods. There's literally 277 features with this mod, so I'm not gonna list everything here. I'll scroll through the features on the screen, just pause the video and read if you wanna see the features, or you can just go to the mod page. To install this, simply download and open the file. Once opened, Head into EN and drag and drop the mix sets folder into your mod loader directory. Now this is where you're going to need to do some of your own setup. Head into the readme file and read through it. 
Basically, you want to go into the INI and get a good feel of what this mod does, which is a lot. You can also go through the settings folder that the mod gives and get a preset, but it may not be exactly how you want it set up. To gain proper controller support, we'll use a mod called GMPUT. Quick heads up that if your controller is a PS3 controller or something that doesn't work officially, you'll need a program such as SCP Toolkit or DS4 Windows. Those programs are beyond the scope of this video, so reach search it if it's necessary. To install GMPUT, simply down the mod and drag and drop the GMPUT SA folder into your mod loader folder. If you want more configurations like using IV styled controls, head into the mods INI file, which will be in mod loader GMPUT SA folder. Now I'm going to start with troubleshooting. The mod we'll use for troubleshooting is a mod known as SCR Log. It basically lets you know what Clio mod was last triggered, thus telling you what mod was most likely crashing your game. I say most likely because it could be something that doesn't utilize Clio, like a car model or something like that. The way it does this is in the form of a window pop-up and a dot .log file, which will be created wherever you place your SCR log.asi file. Which by the way, if you can't see dot .log files, click view at the top of your file explorer, then check the box for file name extensions. Anyway, looking at the dot .log file, at the end you'll see a line similar to this wherever you crash. You could try removing the script, and if the crash persists, chances are that it's something else. If you can't find the script, head to your clio.log file and look for the script name that was in the SCR log file. Another way to figure out crashes and whatnot is to head to the crash list link in the description. It's a sort of long read, but it's worth it if you decide to mod a lot. Anyway, to install SCR log, just download it, open it, head into the EM folder, and drag and drop the SCR log folder into your mod loader folder. If you want to run GTSA, MTA, or SEMP on Steam, you can. You'll just need this launcher. Simply down the mod and put the exe into your game's main directory. Just make sure that your GTSA directory is where your Steam actually reads where the game is. To find this, right click GTSA on Steam, click Properties, Local Files, and Browse. Obviously for this to work with a totally legit copy, you will need to download the Steam copy, which is what I did. 